Good morning. Welcome to everyone, especially Peyton's family, his friends, former teammates here in front of us, members of our coaching staff, personnel staff, support staffs. Welcome. This is a historic day for the Denver Broncos in the National Football League. It's also a day of reflection and celebration as we recognize everything that Peyton Manning has meant to our organization. Now, we were fortunate to experience Peyton's enormous impact for just a small part, only four seasons of his magnificent 18-year NFL career. But what a special, memorable, and remarkable time in our history that has been. In this very room four years ago, our owner, Pat Boland, introduced Peyton after John Elway had signed him as a free agent from the Colts. Pat talked about how fortunate his organization was to now have two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Pat said at the time, our goal has always been to win Super Bowls and Peyton gives us a chance to win another world championship. He couldn't have been more right about that. When Peyton was on his visit, he, I had the chance to meet with him. He came by my office and on a whiteboard in my office at the time was a rendering of what is now our Pat Bowen Fieldhouse. And Peyton, who likes to ask a lot of questions, as we all know, uh, said, when's that going to be ready? <laughs> and it took everything I had in me not to say tomorrow. <laughs> um, we, would have done, we were doing everything we possibly could to, to uh, have him come be a member of our organization. We all had an idea of what a special player Peyton was, but what we didn't know was how much his impact would stretch far beyond the playing field. I can stand here today and tell you that Peyton Manning made our team better, he made our organization better, and he made our community better. On the field, no team won more than the Broncos in the last four years with Peyton as our quarterback. This was highlighted by four division titles, two home AFC championship game victories, and a world championship win in Super Bowl 50, Peyton's final game. No player threw more touchdown passes in the regular season and playoffs than Peyton during that time. Of course, we all remember he had 55 of them in 2013, the most prolific season any quarterback has ever had. Now, many took for granted that Peyton would be that type of record-setting player when he joined here. But that wouldn't have been possible without the incredible amount of hard work, determination, and resolve that went into his unprecedented return from injury. That needs to be recognized here today. Off the field, Peyton was one of the greatest ambassadors this organization and the National Football League has ever seen. Inside our building, he made sure everyone felt included and wanted them to know they were an important part of our team that includes practice squad players, this included support staff, even part-time workers. Outside our building, whether through his Payback Foundation, through the team, or on his own, he always made giving back a priority. You heard a lot of the good that he did, the countless visits, the letters, phone calls, even videos. Most of it, though, went unacknowledged. That's the way he wanted it. All done with very little fanfare, very little attention drawn to himself. And he didn't give back only when people reached out to him. Oftentimes, he was the one making the call, asking, what can I do to help? What can I do here? If you look back, on his time as a Bronco, there are a few things Peyton wasn't able to do. But he'd be the first to tell you, it was never about that. It was always about being the best teammate and the best person he could be. Peyton, you were all of that and more to the Denver Broncos and the National Football League. If there is a list of, of, of achievements needed to attain greatness, you have checked every box. We could not be more proud that you chose to play for the Broncos. Thank you for all you did for this team and our organization. 
We will miss watching you play quarterback. It has been a joy. Congratulations on your retirement, and I know all of us here look forward to your Ring, and fame, Ring of Fame induction and your Pro Football Hall of Fame induction. At this point, I'd like to bring up John Elway for a few remarks. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> and I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, sorry about my voice. I, uh, it's amazing how many times I've been sick since that Super Bowl. I think we were, we, at least I used everything up going through that year. So the last month has been uh, up and down health-wise, but it was, it's been all worth it. But uh, I would like to say, you know, as I was talking to Peyton earlier uh, this morning, there's not a guy in the NFL that can walk away and say, I have done everything that, is possibly, that can possibly be done at the quarterback position in the NFL. And no one else can say that. And Peyton Manning can say that. And that's an unbelievable accomplishment when you really think about what he's done. And you'd look about, we're going to hear about the numbers and the wins and the awards. Um, and all those things are amazing. But to me, the thing that's the most amazing is the way he went about it and the work ethic that he took about, that, he, that the way he worked about his uh, film study on the field and how much, how much it meant to him. I know, it's, I know this is a tough day for him. Having been through it, I know it's a hard day for him because for 18 years he played this game so great. And he played it as good as anybody's ever played it. And not only that, he was a great teammate. His teammates liked to play with him and for him. I will tell you this, four years ago when uh, you know, the, the unimaginable happened, and that was Peyton Manning was going to be a, UF, a free agent. And at first did we actually think, did I actually think we had a shot? I, you know what, I, I really didn't think we had a shot, especially with where we were coming from. But fortunately, I got the first call in, and we got the first trip here, and we were able to show him what Mr. Bolin had built here with the Denver Broncos, what, what, what Colorado was all about. And through that process, uh, you know, we were able to recruit him here and have him come here and play for us. And uh, from that day on, you look at what we've done the last four years, and a lot of that is attributable to this guy because he's made my job easy. Bottom line, as I say, Mr. Bowen wants to win championships and you get to play with Peyton Manning. They said, where do we sign? And that's really what happened. And that's why we're able to put these great teams together. And uh, it was because of what he was about and he went, what he meant to this league, what his reputation was in this league, and how we attracted football players. Because they knew if he was on their team, we had a chance to win a world championship. And fortunately, we were able to get that done. And we wouldn't have got it done without you, Peyton. And... Uh, you know, I just, you know, the thing is, I'm going to say one other thing about Peyton, and I'm going to turn it over to Gary. And the things that, I, it was a treat for an ex-quarterback to be able to watch Peyton Manning prepare and work and play the game. So many times when you watched, and I call, I'll call it the old days, was we, we'd get the snap, we'd try to figure out coverage on the way back, make our reads there, and then go from there. Peyton Manning revolutionized the game. We always used to think that a, that a no huddle was a, was a fast pace, get to the line of scrimmage, and get people off balance. Fate revolutionized it. And you know what? We're going to get to the line of scrimmage, take our time. I'm going to find out what you're doing, and then I'm going to pick you apart. And I can't tell you how many times I thought and I looked at it and I said, dang, why don't we think of that? <laughs> but Peyton did think about that. And it was really something because he did re revolutionize the game, what he was able to do pre-snap. And another thing. If he was a guy, then I think that we all as athletes and every athlete out there should look at Peyton Manning, what Peyton Manning's about. Of course, a football player is a man, but Peyton Manning utilized every asset that God gave him to be the best football player that he could be. And that's the thing to me is, a mo is makes, which sets him apart from anybody else because he got every ounce of ability that he has. And that's what made him so great. And that's why he'll be able to walk away from the game like he's walking away today with things that nobody else has done. So, Peyton, congratulations. Thanks for becoming a Denver Bronco. We owe you a lot. You're going to ride off in the sunset. We know that there's going to be a hell of a lot of things out there for you, and you're going to be successful at those. But thank you so much for the four years that you've given us. And also, on behalf of every Bronco fan out there that has not tweeted you, or said thank you. I'm going to say on behalf of all our fans, thank you. All right, Gary. Uh, good morning, 
Good to see everybody. Um, first off, Peyton, I just want to say thanks to you and your family for giving me the opportunity today to be a part of this, be a small part of this. Uh, I think it's well documented. Obviously, I, I've been with Peyton one year. Nine months is what I said a while ago, Peyton. Is that about right? But myself, like many coaches in the National Football League, uh, spent a lot of time trying to beat him. Uh, about the last 17 years, I uh, had many opportunities, wasn't very successful. As a matter of fact, Patrick Smythe reminded me today that your record when I was in Houston was 10-2 and two against me. And I told Patrick, I said, Patrick, you know, his record this year was 10-2 and two as a starter, and I think he was 10-2 and two or 10-1 and one or 10-0 and oh against a lot of coaches in this league. So, uh, but I have tremendous respect for you. And throughout my years in the league as a coach, I think we all knew, I knew what he was as a player, what he accomplished as a player, what he was capable of doing as a player. But I think the thing that we all respected is what you were as a person and the way you represented the National Football League. I know as a coach, we get reminded all the time about the shield, protecting the shield, doing right by the National Football League. There could not have been a greater example than yourself throughout the years. But it's been a great nine months. And everything ended the right way for the Denver Broncos. And what a ride it was. But it wasn't easy, was it? It wasn't easy. And what I want to do is I'm going to share a story with everybody. So I know I'm sharing it with all of America today. But I want to do this. I think it's important. And I'll be real quick. But this season was a great one. But it was a tough one. And he and I had some tremendous meetings, interesting moments along the way. And I'm going to make it brief, but I want to make a point. We were nine weeks into the season. We were 7-2. and two. We had had a rough day against Kansas City. I knew he wasn't feeling good. I knew his foot was hurting. We went in my office, and I said, you're going to get well. He was not real happy with that, not real happy. But we proceeded on that path to getting him well and trying to hang on as a football team and continue to battle. So over the next seven weeks, we had many meetings, didn't we? Many meetings, many sit-downs. And I remember him coming out of the cast after putting his foot in the cast for a couple of weeks, right, Greek? And he comes out of the cast, and we sit down. And I said, okay, what's the next step? What do we do here? He said, well, it's time to go back to work. I'm going to come back. I want to play. I want to finish this thing out the right way. And I said, all right, well, we step back on the field. We go to work next week. And I'll never forget what he told me that day. He said, listen, he said, I don't want to be a distraction. I'm not ready to play yet. If I go back on that field with the team, it's going to be all about me. You keep everybody focused on the team. I'll get myself well. And that's what he did. So we devised a plan. Every day we'd come in here, we'd get the team going, we'd have our meetings as a team. Peyton went across the field over there to the bubble. He took three guys with him, the famous three, I would call them. He took Sunshine, Jordan Taylor, for all of y'all who don't know who that is. He took Coach Harry, who works in the equipment room, and he doubles as a quarterback coach. <laughs> and he took Hireman over there, and he went to work. And we filmed those sessions. And I watched the film, and we went through that process for a few weeks. And I would deal with the team, and he'd be over there working in the mornings. And every Friday, I'd come over there, and I'd watch him work out. Well, we went through this process for a few weeks. And as we went through that process, there were some highs and lows. There was one setback, if I recall. But we kept pushing. And all of a sudden, it was different. I knew, it was, I knew he felt like it was time, that he was ready to play, that he was in the right place. So I think it was two, there was two weeks left in the regular season. He and I talked, and I could tell through his voice he felt very good about what was going on, and he was ready to come back. So we decided that week we would proceed the same way. So we started our Wednesday, had the meeting with the team. He went over and worked out. We went about our business. That evening, I watched his tape, and it looked better than ever. Everything was pretty consistent. Thursday was different. We had our, our work as a team. He had his workout. I sat down to watch a film. As I'm watching the film that day, there was something different about the workout. During the workout, he sent me a signal to the film. Hey, war number one, you could take it that way. I took it as I'm ready to play, coach. Okay? 
So I was, I was heading home that night. I texted him. I said, hey, the workout looked great today. And oh, by the way, I got the signal. <laughs> and I said, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I'm going to watch you work out tomorrow. So let me, let me get through with the team in the morning. I'm coming to watch. So we had our meeting Friday morning. Greek and I walked over to the bubble, walked in, and they were through. And they were supposed to start at 9, but they were already through. So I walked in the bubble, and I looked at all of them, and I said, hey, what's the deal here? I was supposed to watch you guys at 9. And his three buddies, they kind of tiptoed out of the bubble because <laughs> they knew something was fixing to take place here. But they all said, Coach, he said we're starting at 8. So they were through. So, I, so, so he and I started our conversation. I'll try to make a long story short. Why would you start it? I wanted to. I'm ready to play. Before I knew it, the only people left in the bubble were Peyton and I and a bag of footballs. For five minutes, I proceeded to tell him what I thought was going on with our team and where we were at. For the next 25 minutes, Peyton proceeded to tell me where he was, what he thought our team could do, and that he was ready to lead our team in that direction. And he was right. He was right. And what he, what he proceeded to do over the course of the next month and leading these players, this football team, and the coaches, and push everybody was a difference in how we ended up as a football team. So I have the utmost respect for what you did, the utmost respect. And on behalf of myself, the coaches, the players, everybody in this organization, thanks for doing it. I know it was tough, and you were special along the way. So it was only nine months for me, but I'll remember it for a lifetime. I love you, bud. I wish you the best. Okay, great job. In my very first NFL game, I completed my first pass to Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk. I threw a touchdown in that same game to Marvin Harrison, who will be inducted into the Hall of Fame this August. The quarterback for our opponent, the Miami Dolphins, was, after my dad, my favorite player, Hall of Famer Dan Marino who on the first third down of the game completed a 25-yard skinny post. And it was the damnedest throw I'd ever seen. Later, I completed the pass to tight end Marcus Pollard down the middle. And somebody hit me really hard. And after I got up, I told myself, I know I can play in this league. Later in that struggling season, we played in and lost to Baltimore. It was the first time that the Colts had returned to Baltimore since they had moved back in 1984. We didn't exactly get a warm reception that day. Fans were screaming at me and I kept thinking, hey, I was only eight years old then, get off of my back. I had met him once before, but when the game was over, I had a chance to shake Johnny Unitas' hand. He told me, Peyton, you stay at it. I'm pulling for you. Well, I have stayed at it. I've stayed at it for 18 years. And I hope that old number 19 is up there with his flat top and maybe his black high tops on. And I hope he knows that I have stayed at it and maybe he's even a little proud of me. There's just something about 18 years. 18 is a good number. And today I retire from pro football. I want to thank the people of New Orleans and South Louisiana. New Orleans is my hometown. And of course, they support their own team, the Saints, but they also support their own. And that city and state have backed me from the start. Almost 19 years ago to the day, I announced my decision to forego the draft and stay at the University of Tennessee for my senior year. It was one of the smartest decisions I've ever made. I cherished my time in Knoxville, especially my senior year. And I want ball fans everywhere to know the unique role that you've played in my life. Thank you to the Indianapolis Colts organization and all the fans across this country. You can't fathom how much I enjoyed my 14 years there or the warmth that my family feels for you. I'd be wrong not to mention Jim Irsay, Phil Polian, some great coaches, support staff, and a host of wonderful Colts teammates, many of whom will be lifelong friends. When I was drafted by the Colts, Indianapolis was a basketball and a car race in town. But it didn't take long for the Colts to convert the city and state of Indiana into football evangelists. We ended my rookie season 3-13, and 
And in the process, I set the NFL rookie record for interceptions, a record that I still hold today. <laughs> Every year, I pull for a rookie quarterback to break that record. <laughs> Andrew Luck, Matthew Stafford, Eli Manning, Cam Newton. I still kid Eli that he would have broken it if he had started all 16 games. In the beginning of my time in Indy, the team's struggles were agonizing. My grandfather would call me weekly to ask if his favorite announcers, John Madden and Pat Summerall, would be broadcasting our game. Pawpaw, I'd say, we're only 2-8 and eight right now. We're playing the 3-7 and seven Bengals. Madden and Summerall don't broadcast those kinds of games. Fast forward to my second year when we had gotten things going a little bit. We were playing the Dallas Cowboys, including Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin, and Deion Sanders. I called Paul Paul. Guess what? Madden and Summerall are broadcasting the game. He said, I can't believe it. <laughs> he was elated. He was very proud. And we beat the Cowboys that week. And we let the world know that the Colts had arrived. Make no mistake about it. We were coming. And we went on to do some phenomenal things like winning at least 12 games seven years in a row, and of course, winning Super Bowl 41. And I was truly honored and proud to be a part of it. There's a saying that goes, treat a man as he is and he will remain as he is. Treat a man as he could be and he will become what he should be. When I visited Denver four years ago, if John Elway had sat me down and said, Peyton, here's what we're going to do. We're going to win over 50 games, win four straight division championships, lose only three division games in four years, and none will be on the road. We'll beat the Patriots in two championship games. You're going to win NFL Comeback Player of the Year, another MVP. Your offense will set single-season passing records. You'll break a couple more all-time records, and we'll go to a couple of Super Bowls. I think I would have taken that deal. <laughs> John, you did tell me that, didn't you? Grateful is the word that comes to my mind when thinking of the Denver Broncos. I want to thank Pat Bowen and his family, Joe Ellis, John Elway, John Fox, Gary Kubiak, and their staffs, for, and all the support people in this great organization. To all of my Denver teammates, thank you for what you've done for this old quarterback. And, of course, my gratitude to the Broncos fans everywhere. Over my NFL career, I've had five head coaches who helped me become better at my craft and helped me become a better human being. Jim Mora, Tony Dungy, Jim Caldwell, John Fox, Gary Kubiak. While I've obviously changed teams, I've had the same football representation for almost two decades. I owe Tom Condon many thanks. He has represented me with class at every juncture, and he'll always be a great friend. I want to thank a tremendous group of friends who have supported my football career and been at my side at games from high school to Tennessee, Indy, and through that incredible Broncos Super Bowl win last month. You know who you are and what you mean to me. And there is no way to measure or properly express what a family like mine can mean. Mom, Dad, Cooper, Eli, extended family, you are the best. And Ashley, your support is as potent a motivator as any man could have. Ashley's and my kids, Marshall and Mosley, have only been around for a couple of years, but they have changed my life forever. A week before the Super Bowl, our daughter Mosley asked me, Daddy, is this the last game? Yes, Mosley, it's the last game of the season. I sure do want you to win that trophy. I do too, Mosley. And that's what we're going to try to do. Then she asked, Daddy, is this the last game ever? And that's just when I shook my head in amazement because I was thinking Mort and Adam Schefter had gotten to my five-year-old daughter to cultivate a new source. <laughs> when someone thoroughly exhausts an experience, they can't help but revere it. I revere football. I love the game. So you don't have to wonder if I'll miss it. Absolutely. Absolutely, I will. Our children are small now, but as they grow up, we're going to teach them to enjoy the little things in life because one day they'll look back and discover that those really were the big things. So here are the seemingly little things that when I look into my rearview mirror have grown much bigger. I'm going to miss a steak dinner at St. Elmo's in Indianapolis after a win. 
my battles with players named Lynch, Lewis, Thomas, Bruski, Fletcher, Dawkins, Seau, Erlocker, Palomalu, Harrison, Woodson, and Reed, and with coaches like Fisher, Ryan, Belichick, Kiffin, Phillips, Rivera, LeBeau, Cornell, Capers, Lewis, the late Jim Johnson, and so many more. I always felt like I was kind of playing against that middle linebacker or that safety or that defensive coach. I miss figuring out blitzes with Jeff Saturday, Reggie sitting on top of the bench next to me, and perfecting a fake handoff to Edgerman James. I miss Demarius Thomas telling me that he loved me and thanking me for coming to Denver after every touchdown I threw to him. I miss putting in a play with Tom Moore and Adam Gase that ends in a touchdown on Sunday. On Fridays, I'll miss picking out the game balls with my equipment, guys. And talking football with the broadcast crews before the game, and afterwards, I'll miss recapping the game with my dad and checking to see if the Giants won and calling Eli as we're both on our team buses. I miss that handshake with Tom Brady, and I miss the plane rides after a big win with 53 teammates standing in the aisles, laughing and celebrating during the whole fight. I miss playing in, some, in front of so many great fans, both at home and on the road, and I'll even miss the Patriot fans in Foxborough, and they should miss me <laughs> because they sure did get a lot of wins off of me. And this is important. Football fans everywhere need to know how much they've meant to me over the years. Fans, you are at the core of what makes this game remarkable. I've received more letters from you than I can count. Fan letters that have touched me, made me think, laugh, and moved me to act. I've learned a lot through my mistakes, stumbles, and losses in football. I've also learned that this game is a mighty platform that has given me a voice that can echo well beyond the game. Football has taught me not to be led by obstructions and setbacks, but instead to be led by dreams. Due to some good genes, I'm smart enough to know that those lessons can enrich who I am and where I go from here. I'm totally convinced that the end of my football career is just the beginning of something I haven't even discovered yet. Life is not shrinking for me. It's morphing into a whole new world of possibilities. Pundits will speculate that my effort and drive over the past 18 years were about mastery and about working to master every aspect of the NFL game. Well, don't believe them, because every moment, every drop of sweat, every bleary-eyed night of preparation, every note I took, and every frame of film I watched was about one thing, reverence for this game. When I look back on my NFL career, I'll know without a doubt that I gave everything I had to help my teams walk away with a win. There were other players who were more talented, but there was no one who could outprepare me. And because of that, I have no regrets. There's a scripture reading, 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Well, I fought a good fight. I have finished my football race. And after 18 years, it's time. God bless all of you. And God bless football. Congrats. Thank you. It's Thank been you, a man. slice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just wondering, these last four weeks since the Super Bowl, were you ever close to uh, thinking you would come back for one more season? Mike, I really wanted to do 
um, like I said after, uh, at the game and take you know, Coach Dungey's advice and really take some time to uh, enjoy that Super Bowl win. Uh, I was telling somebody, you know, I've played 18 years, but this was the only, the second off season that I could start in a good mood uh, <laughs> after winning a world championship. And I know how hard it is to win that world championship. I know how hard it is to get there. I know how hard it is to win a game. So I really wanted to take some time and enjoy that. I went on family vacation, uh, went hunting with uh, my old teammate Jeff Saturday and uh, really just had some great time to reflect on this past season and all that uh, Coach Kubiak mentioned that uh, we had been through and I had gone through uh, on the field. And um, so I really took some time to do that. But um, I uh, um, thought about it a lot, prayed about it a lot. And like I, like I said earlier, it was just the right time. And maybe I don't throw as good or run as good as I used to, but I've always had good timing. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's, the, that's the true case in this sense. Um, I've had the privilege of covering Troy Aikman and Brett Favre and now your career, and I want to ask you the same thing that I asked them when they retired, and that is how do you figure to scratch that competitive itch that you've been scratching for all these years? Oh, uh, it, you know, it's hard to say. I, um, I, I've talked to, to John about this uh, uh, over the past four years, and uh, uh, he's given me some great insight uh, as, as to kind of what – some of the feelings that I'll be going through, you know, over the next couple of months and, uh, you know, in years. And, and so I, I've appreciated his advice and friendship and support. Um, so uh, I don't know. I haven't ruled anything out. Um, I, I have made no decisions. Uh, I'm going to go on vacation again after this and uh, go, go play a little golf uh, in, uh, pretty soon with, 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 with my two brothers. And uh, we'll kind of enjoy this. I, I really have enjoyed uh, – this past day and a half, I've had a chance to call uh, some special uh, people that have been a part of my football life. And uh, after calling John and, and Joe and Coach Kubiak, I called all five of my head coaches. I had a great conversation with uh, Jim Mora, Tony Dungy, Jim Caldwell, John Fox, and of course I talked to Coach Kubiak, and that was really special, having a chance to go down memory, going down memory lane a little bit. So uh, I'm going to enjoy this. and. Uh, uh, think about some of those things uh, at another time. Peyton, going through what you did this season, how much did it, I don't say bring your career full circle, but I know it was hard, as Gary talked about. Was there a point you weren't sure you were going to get back, and how, did, how gratifying was it to finish, given what you went through for those Two and a half months. Well, like everyone has alluded to uh, earlier today, it was extremely gratifying to uh, finish uh, with a world championship. Uh, it was a special day there in uh, San Francisco, and uh, one that I'll always remember and cherish with, with a great uh, bunch of teammates. Uh, there's no question this was a unique season, and it had plenty of uh, ups and downs, but uh, those conversations, those open and honest conversations with Coach Kubiak were important and uh, helpful, and they were two-way, and uh, that, was, uh, that was important. And um, I, like I said earlier, uh, or during the Super Bowl week, I never assumed anything. I never said, this is going to be it, or I'm, I'm never going to play again, or I'm not going to get healthy. I, I did just what Coach Kubiak mentioned. I, I had kind of a goal one week at a time. I tried to accomplish that goal, and that led to some bigger things. And so it was the right attitude to have during, no doubt, a unique, uh, a unique season. last few weeks there's been a lot of talk about things that happened 20 years ago in your career or in your life. Um, what can you say now about those allegations and how this has maybe overtaken kind of the discussion over the last Yeah, well, you know, first of all, this is a joyous day and nothing can overtake from this day. I think it is sad that uh, some people don't uh, uh, understand uh, the truth and the facts and uh, I did not do what has been alleged, and I am not interested in relitigating something that happened when I was 19 years old. Um, and I, kind of like my dad used to say when I was in trouble, I, I can't say it any plainer than that. Um, and so this is a joyous day, and uh, it's a special day. And like Forrest Gump said, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Four years ago, when 
you needed to start the second chapter of your football career. How much did that first call from the Broncos mean to you? I think it was important. Um, old Elway always had pretty good timing as well. And uh, um, it, it was the first call he and, he and John Fox uh, made to me. And it was a difficult day, uh, you know, just going through uh, a, a, a um, that press conference uh, in Indianapolis, which I think four years ago today. Uh, so, uh, and uh, old Foxy and, and John called, and uh, and you know, with Foxy, of course, it's 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 a it's a fun conversation. It's upbeat, and kind of it kind of got me in a good mood again. And then John got on and just said, "Hey, when you're ready, we'd love for you to come out there." And I think that probably was as important as anything that. Uh, John kind of mentioned recruiting me, but it was not a, uh, hey, we have to know something tonight, or hey, uh, you're hanging us out here. It was just, when I came out to Denver, you know, John said, you know, John understood what I was feeling, that it was a gut-wrenching time. And he played a long time, and uh, he, of course, played for the same franchise his whole uh, career, but he understood it. And so it was good to have a guy to talk to. And the fact that they weren't pushing me and weren't giving me a deadline, that made a, that made a big difference. It allowed me to take some time and uh, think about finding the right place for me. And uh, I couldn't have made a better decision uh, coming out to play these last four years in Denver. Wait, I'm uh, just curious, who did you consult in this decision, if anybody? And would you consider it a health decision, a life decision? I mean, where, where do you put all that? Yeah, no, I think it's just, once again, going back to that timing. Uh, <laughs> it, it, was, it was the right time, and um, it was not easy. It was difficult. Uh, like I said, I love football. I love it. Um, I, you know, of course, uh, talked to my family about it and, uh, you know, had a lot of good conversations with the good Lord about it. And, uh, um, you know, I, I had some friends. I, I, got, I got three special uh, old Colts here uh, tonight that, that have been great friends and, um, you know, Jeff Saturday and Brandon Stokely and, and Bill Polian, but they're all in the media now. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I talk to them, you know, I kind of say, who are we talking as a, are you my old center or are you, are you ESPN that's lost all that weight and looks so good on TV? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I kept it, I kept my thoughts and feelings, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, Pretty uh, tight, and uh, but like I said, it just it felt like the right time, and um, uh, that's kind of how all that went about. Thank you. You've always worked to get better. You said today nobody will prepare better than you, so I'm going to assume you're always constantly learning. And what was probably one of the most unique but rewarding years? What was unique that you learned this year that was different than all the other years? That may have led to a championship moment. Well, uh, I've always um, thought it was important to be a good teammate. And, of course, maybe that was always easy to say when you were the starting quarterback and healthy and uh, uh, winning a lot of games and playing pretty well. It probably is easy to be a good teammate uh, uh, during those times because a lot of things are going good. But I guess what I found out about myself is that I felt like I was a good teammate during a very difficult season when I was injured. I was not playing well, um, and uh, just uh, just it was a struggle. And, but but I, I felt like I had a good attitude, and I would, you know, talk to DT and Emmanuel, and uh, talk about the offense, and have good conversations with Brock, and share any thoughts I had uh, with him on the Patriots as he was playing against them for the first time, and uh, you know was in the meetings when I could be with Knapp and, and Rico, and and uh, just try to be a good teammate. Uh, you can't help all that much when you're not playing. You can help the most when you're playing, but I tried to do the best that I could. And, and being around, I think, was important. Being visible. And I thought guys saw me rehabbing, saw me working out, and um, I knew my teammates had my back, which that was important to me. And uh, I don't think you ever get too, too high up or, or too old uh, not, to need, uh, not to need encouragement from your teammates. And so this was a special group of guys uh, to play with. Uh, I have special friendships with all my old Colts teammates, the ones that I'll cherish. But uh, I have some special ones here. A lot of guys are here uh, today, and that means a lot. You guys are here. Vaughn, I mean, the fact that you came in from your celebrity tour to be here today, <laughs> that really, 
that really means a lot. You know, I know you got to get ready for that Dancing with the Stars uh, pretty soon, but uh, I, I, I'll be thankful for all these guys, uh, Von Miller, DeMarcus, you know, I, you know, I didn't mention a lot of, I mentioned some names. I can't, I, I didn't have time to mention every name. I, I'm thankful to have played with so many great teammates for two um, great organizations. And, you know, people always, people always were asking me, you know, who are you retiring today as? Um, I'm retiring as a, as a football player, that, you know, from the University of Tennessee that played for the Colts and the Broncos and was, uh, you know, very lucky to have played for all of them. That the signal you gave Gary after your private work. I can't there. confirm or deny that. I can't. <laughs> if, in fact, that happened, why that day as opposed to days leading up to that day? Well, like, like I said, I, I can't, I'd be lying if I sat here and told you that was not a frustrating time. Um, you know, the team uh, meets uh, here every morning. I'm a part of those meetings. And then um, everyone goes on to their individual meetings and goes to practice and I go in the little quarantine sandbox in the far corner. Don't, hey, don't get near any of the real players. You go over there and uh, you can take sunshine. And, and uh, it was nice of them. You know, they gave me a practice squad receiver, an equipment guy, and a guy on injured reserve to throw to. I was really, uh, I really, you know, I appreciated that. It, actually, it, couldn't, have been, it couldn't have been better guys. Jordan Taylor's gonna, might be a, might, might, uh, gonna surprise a lot of people. Uh, for the Broncos next year, in my opinion. And uh, Jeff is going to get healthy. He's an awesome uh, uh, football player. And uh, nobody appreciates a good equipment guy more than I do. And uh, Flip and Harry and John Scott and Frog and T and all the guys that I've been to, uh, there's, there's a special bond there. So, But it, it was a frustrating time because uh, I wasn't getting as healthy as quickly as I wanted to. Um, you know, I'm throwing in that indoor facility and, you know, not feeling the same. And, and then you are starting to make some progress. Oh, then you have a little setback. And then, of course, you're not playing. I mean, I, I just I, uh, was so fortunate for so many years to have had great health and to have played in so many games. And so not to be playing, uh, it, it was tough. And so um, but I, I was starting to feel a little better around that time and maybe getting back to being a little more myself and my, my signals and my hand gestures. And so maybe, how I, maybe that was the timing of that. Hey, uh, I'm not sure if you might someday strap on a football helmet again like he did in that hot tub a couple of years ago. No chance. No chance. <laughs> what, what would you say is the proudest moment of your career? Oh, but that's hard. It's, it's hard to answer right now. It's hard to list. Um, this game, in my opinion, is a, is a people business. It's a relationship business. It, it's certainly not a play on the field. Uh, or a uh, throw, uh, it's none of that, it, it's moments. You know, obviously having my family and being able to hold my kids uh, a month ago uh, uh, with that Super Bowl trophy, it was one that you'll always remember. But uh, I mentioned a lot of those memories uh, uh, today of, of small, small moments that have uh, been a huge part of my career. And I mentioned some names. I mean, there's so many other players that I've played against that I have so much respect for. All those players are all old and retired. Woodson was the last one. He's going out with me, but the rest of them, you know, like Lynch, are kind of from the old school. And so I, I kind of picked some of those names. And uh, coaches, there's so many more of those. But uh, those guys, no offense, way were kind of up in age as well that I mentioned. And uh, that's kind of how that list came about. And uh, I got great respect for the game. And uh, I'm just grateful for the relationships and the friendships that I've formed in the 18 years I've played. Final question, Woody. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Woody. Go Big Orange. Thanks. Uh, you've revolutionized the position. I, I wonder if you can go back to, was that by design? And secondly, how meaningful is it that you are now and your family is working with so many guys that have become quarterbacks in the National Football League? And, and the effect and footprint that will have on the, his, uh, on the future of the game? Well, certainly I'm a, I'm a fan of quarterbacks, and I mentioned Marino and my thoughts on, you know, John Elway growing up and Aikman. And like I said, I don't want to get into the list, but I, I love quarterbacks, and this, our football passing academy has been a great uh, way for me and Eli and my dad to stay connected with the uh, college quarterbacks that are getting ready to go play pro ball and also try to help some high school quarterbacks learn a little bit more about the position. Um, and uh, I'm just uh, I'm grateful for that. And I forgot the first part of your question. Uh, is part of your 
legacy? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. That's, I can't answer that myself. Uh, I, I'm I'm grateful for John's words and um, some other thing, nice things that have been said this past day and a half. I'm very grateful. Um, I. Uh, I studied uh, hard at the game and uh, prepared hard, and I guess I found out early, as a, a coach told me, that I, I could process a lot of information and make really fast decisions. Uh, he, he, he shared with that with me, and maybe he said maybe that's not um, totally normal, if you will. And so that, I think, allowed coaches to uh, put a lot of things on my plate and, and, and trust me. I never abused that trust, Woody. You know, Mentioned Tom Moore and Adam and uh, you know Rico. I, you know I never abused the, the trust that they would put in me to to change a play and to um, uh, you know try to improve our offensive uh, chances of, of success on that play. So I felt like I earned that trust and, and I worked hard to uh, keep that trust, but I never took advantage of it. And uh, but it was a fun way to play quarterback. Uh, it really was and. Uh, but I had great coaches and players. It wouldn't have been possible without that. Okay, so, Omaha.